What were the most significant challenges faced by the board during your tenure? For the board, what we what we were faced with, we started, we rolled out a new teacher accountability model. It, we were asking teachers to do a lot more uh, to become prepared for the classroom. There was a lot of pushback on that. They they felt that it was asking too much of them. They're already overburdened with having to deal with the children. Now you want us to do extra work, to, you know, to prove that we're good teachers. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was a difficult thing. We worked on um, the A to F report card. That was another big challenge. Our, our challenge with that was going from a, a, a system of, okay, we're an improving district or continuing improvement um, or, or we're, we're okay. You know, it, it just didn't work. We said yeah. A to F makes it clear. That's what everybody's report card looks like. So we could do that at the state level. Yeah. It was very difficult to get people to understand. And it was, there was a lot of pushback from the districts on that. They, they didn't want to have to explain it to their, the parents, because what they were starting to find out, parents were starting to find out was that our school district isn't quite as good as we thought it was. Mm -hmm. So that, that received a lot of pushback. You know, it's interesting uh, what we, you know, back in the day when you and I were in school, <laughs> I mean, it was A to F, okay? Yes. And uh, C was considered average, right. uh, and F was a failure, and F was like, you know, 60% or, you know, in that exactly. ballpark, you know. In other words, if you didn't get at least that many right, you failed. Um, right. And, and that whole process has shifted so significantly, and, you know, in many locations, it's really an A to C. So there is no D or F because we don't fail anybody uh, because it might not make them feel good it or, hurts their we, feeling. or we just you know we can't keep them in the system they you know we got to keep moving them through the system um, and so you know the lowest grade you get is a C and so people that are actually failing miserably are getting a C and moving right on with the, the rest and uh, honestly that's a huge I don't know if parents understand that, uh, but that is such a huge disservice uh, because we are rewarding uh, failure uh, from, from the standpoint of teachers and from right. the standpoint of students. Right. And, you know, and, you know, it's like, you know, that all that does is reinforce bad behavior or reinforce um, practices that are not serving their intended purposes. Uh, they're not helping that student. Uh, in reality, they are setting them back for the whole of their life. Well, I look at, I look at this too. The, one of the other challenges we had was we implemented the third grade reading guarantee. Mm -hmm. I pushed for that so hard. And I said, you, you need to be sure that a child knows how to read by the end of third grade. Otherwise, you're setting them up for failure yep. because they're not going to be able to read the stuff that they have in fourth grade and fifth grade. And mm -hmm. then by sixth, seventh or eighth grade, they're done. They, yep. they, they've had it. So yep. I remember giving a speech up in Cleveland to the um, new school board members, state school board members, not state school board members, but local school board members who were mm -hmm. new, mm -hmm. about 250 people in the room. And I finished my speech and this one lady raised her hand and she, she said, I'm, I'm just really worried about that, that little third grade girl who isn't going to go on to fourth grade because she can't pass the, uh, the reading test. And, uh, you know, she's just not gonna feel good about herself not being able to go to fourth grade. And I told her, I said, I will guarantee you that if you allow that little girl to go on to fourth grade, not knowing how to read, she's not gonna feel good about herself for the rest of her life. Yep. People just went berserk. They they applauded. It was finally somebody said it out loud. Yep. And I was the state board president. Mm -hmm. And I said, that that's that's my gut feeling. We have 
the, the statistics to prove it true. Mm -hmm. We base our prison population on the third grade yeah. reading scores. Mm -hmm. And it correlates. Yeah. You've got about 30,000 kids who can't read in third grade, and you end up with 30,000 prisoners. And that's that's how they yeah. apply the, the numbers. And it, 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 it correlates. And that's that's sad. That's yeah. just sad. So we don't we don't have to do it. And that goes back to the early childhood piece. You get that early childhood piece in there and you those numbers drop substantially. Yes. Yes. And I think, too, with the, with the third grade reading guarantee, the wonderful thing about that for me was that in the first grade, if a child is not on track for for reading, you set up a plan. Yeah. And that child has that plan and he doesn't get off the plan until he's up to, to on track. Yeah. Now, if you end up at the end of third grade, it is no surprise whether that child is going to pass that test or not. Yeah. It comes as no surprise to the parents, the child, or the district. Yeah. So you, you've got to be able to be prepared for those students. Exactly. Well said.